Every day, Kiribati is the first country on earth to experience sunrise, but that could soon change because in a few decades, Kiribati may no longer exist. The country is a tiny island nation in the Pacific Ocean with an altitude that's only 3 meters high, but with sea levels around the country rising faster than the global average, it means Kiribati is one of the most likely countries to disappear due to rising sea levels in the coming decades. But here's the thing, Kiribati is not the only country at risk. As sea levels continue to rise, a number of small island countries are at real risk of sinking into the ocean and disappearing forever. On average, sea levels have increased by more than 8 inches since 1880, with 3 of those inches coming in the last 25 years alone. And new research suggests that things are unlikely to get better soon, with projected increases of another quarter of a meter or 1 foot by 2050. And all of this is bad news for island nations across the Pacific and Indian Oceans. The one thing these countries have in common is the fact that they are flat and low-lying. And there's probably no better example of that than the Maldives. In fact, the Maldives has an average altitude of just 1.5 meters above sea level and the country's highest natural point is only 2.4 meters above sea level, all of which puts the Maldives at huge risk of being submerged by rising sea levels. Reports from NASA and US Geological Survey suggest that at current rates, nearly 80% of the islands that make up the Maldives could become uninhabitable by 2050. And according to a World Bank report, the entire country could be submerged by the end of this century in a worst case scenario of increases in sea levels. Now, 10,000 kilometers east of the Maldives, the Republic of Vanuatu is another one that's at serious risk as sea levels rise. But Vanuatu's situation is made worse because it's located in an area of the ocean called the Pacific Ring of Fire, which makes it incredibly vulnerable to earthquakes, to volcanic eruptions, and most importantly, to climate change. The world got a reminder of this in 2015 with Cyclone Pam in the second most intense tropical cyclone in the South Pacific and the most damaging natural disaster in Vanuatu's history, with damages estimated at around $600 million. The next country on this list is Tuvalu, another tiny island nation, which is in fact the fourth smallest country in the world, with a total land area of approximately 26 square kilometers or less than 0.01% of New York. But Tuvalu isn't just small, it's also pretty flat, with a maximum height of only 5 meters above sea level. Tuvalu's situation is so critical, the country's government officials are drawing attention to their reality by giving press conferences in the ocean to remind the world of how quickly the country is sinking. And finally, there's the Solomon Islands, where the possibility of sinking is not a future prospect to dread, but a nightmare that's already unfolding. As of 2016, five of the country's islands had already been submerged underwater, with others also slowly becoming uninhabitable. Now, it's easy to think of these countries as abstract, faraway concepts, especially if you've never visited them or even heard of them. So to put it in perspective, let's talk about the human cost of these impending disasters by asking a simple question. How many people could be at risk? In a worst case scenario, if these five countries are all submerged, it would render as much as 1.2 million people homeless and stateless, creating a vast number of climate refugees that would be forced to flee their ancestral homes with no hope of ever returning, because those homes would no longer exist. Talking in a matter of decades, that that entire community and society could be wiped out from the face of the earth. Now, island countries are not the only places at risk of being submerged due to rising sea levels. Across the world, a number of cities, especially those on the coast, are also at risk. New worst-case scenario research projections have flagged China's Shanghai as being a high-risk city, with Egypt's Alexandria also being flagged as well. But one city in a large country being at risk of being submerged is very different from an entire country facing that reality. And with this backdrop, it's important to ask, what exactly are these island countries doing to avoid the worst case scenario and save themselves? The truth is, there's not much they can do to slow down sea level rises by themselves, because that's the consequence of actions and activity that happens all over the world. But yet, these countries are not exactly sitting back and waiting for the worst to happen. Instead, they're exploring a range of possible workarounds. In Kiribati, one option is to relocate the entire country. Back in 2012, the country's former president purchased 6,000 acres of land on Fiji's second largest island to relocate the citizens of Kiribati if necessary. But that plan has just one problem. Fiji itself also faces its own problems with rising sea levels. Now, another idea that's been explored in Kiribati 
is to literally raise the country's land area as a way to combat rising sea levels, which essentially means transferring sand and rocks from the seabed to fortify the shores of Kiribati. And that's something the Maldives is already doing on a much larger scale by building an artificial four square kilometer island by using millions of cubic meters of sand pumped from the seabed. Meanwhile, Tuvalu and Vanuatu are taking the Lego route alongside seven other island countries by filing a case at the International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in a bit of force countries into cutting their carbon emissions, which of course are driving global warming, which is in turn causing these islands to sink. It remains to be seen if any of these measures would work, giving obvious question marks around them. For example, relocating an entire country is a huge undertaking, not just from a logistical perspective, but also from a cultural perspective, as the population would be forced to leave their ancestral homes. New cities built in the ocean could also be at risk of rising sea levels at some point in the future, and going up against the world's most powerful countries in court is a tall order as well. So ultimately, these countries and the thousands of people that live in them face the reality of a life-changing fight with the ocean all by themselves. And if we know anything about nature, then we know that eventually, there can only be one winner. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new, please give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to learn about other countries that may soon disappear due to population decline, then check out this video about how South Korea's declining birth rate is driving the country to the brink. See you in the next one.